Hello everybody, we are back again for another image review. If you're new to the channel, my name is Fraser Almeida. I'm an architecture, interiors, and luxury real estate photographer based here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today we're just going to be breaking down a couple of my images that I've shot for my clients doing luxury real estate. And guys, just a reminder, we are officially 10 months away from this year's 2023 PMRE conference in November. Remember, for any of you out there who are into photography that want to get into this field, whether you're into architecture, interior design, or real estate, doesn't matter what it is. There's so much there to learn and grow for all of us individually and as a business. Make sure to be at that event because that's a place you don't want to miss. Last year, we were completely sold out. So this year, don't forget to join the waitlist. Go to PMREconference.com to join the waitlist, not only to get reminded, but to also save some money once those early bird tickets go on sale. Also, if any of you out there are interested in being a speaker or a sponsor for the event, make sure to submit an application on the website as well. Today, we're going to be focusing specifically on twilight photography, how I'm shooting, lighting, and finally delivering the photos to my client. And remember, guys, this isn't a full-out tutorial. This is just a general overview as to my approach into capturing these scenes and editing them for my client. If any of you guys are interested in a full-out tutorial with the techniques, the settings, and all that good stuff, leave a comment below and let me know what you guys think. I I'd love to put something together if you guys really want something full out and in depth. Well, without further ado, guys, let's get to this breakdown. So as you can see, this is a gorgeous build that the architects created for this property. I love the balance between the industrial metals and whatnot that create the actual property and how it sits within the nature surrounding the, in the space. I mean, it's a beautiful balance of the two. You got the, the rusted metals and then you got the earth tones from the actual nature and ground surrounding the property. I love that balance. You know, it's funny, when I was shooting this property, I, I dubbed it the Batman house. I was shooting and literally like I'm standing there and there's bats flying around my head. As a matter of fact, inside the property, there was a bat that was, I don't know how it got in there, but there was a bat inside just flying around. I took some cell phone footage of it, as you guys can see, but it was crazy. I'm like, what is that? I thought it was a bird at first, but when I got to the window, I was like, Holy crap, it was a bat inside the property. That's the first time I've ever seen it. This property is kind of out there in the middle of the, the, the mountains and whatnot. So I guess, you know, um, it's to be expected, but it's definitely a first for me. Being surrounded by that many bats, holy, wow. It, it, was, it was interesting. And on top of that, I had to be careful with, with uh, coyotes and, and snakes and scorpions and all that kind of stuff. Trust me, I had a flashlight flashlight on me the whole time just making sure my surroundings were good but all in all at least nothing happened I was safe and the, the worst that happened to me was uh I ripped my sweater because I was crawling through some uh, barbed wire to get to the other side of this property and I got snug and it ripped it and that's the worst of it but I'm okay at least I didn't get bit or uh attacked by anything all right guys so let's get to this first off the thing that jumps out of me looking at this scene when I'm there is the highlight. As you can see, we have a hot highlight coming here surrounding this frame of uh, the seating area. We got to definitely tone that down. And on top of that, if you guys have remembered from my previous videos, I love to think of these properties when it comes to twilights and when I'm lighting them as the, the center of that home is the sun. And when I'm lighting, I want everything to emanate from there, right? So if I'm going to light the house, that's fine. But everything needs to be, all the shadows and light need, be, need to be coming from that direction. So I'm going to make sure that the center point of this home is my sun and everything is going to be lit, lit and all my shadows are going to be falling off in this direction, right? On top of that, I definitely want to make sure that I light these uh, beams here that are represented in this home just to really showcase that element. I think it's a beautiful design element that the architect created for this home. Other than that, the interior of this property is pretty much exposed well based off of the ambient exposure. Um, I don't need to worry too much about the surrounding areas. I mean, most of this nature here with the leaves and the bushes and whatnot is pretty good. But I do want to make sure that I have some light fall off and light shadows coming in this direction for the where the cactus, cactus is sitting up here on the top. And that's pretty much it. It's not too much we need to do to really get this thing lit and uh, delivered for our client. It's just a couple areas that we need to tackle, which are the highlights. And we just want to make sure we add some light to some of these areas that we need to uh, really showcase the, the design elements for the, for the home. And that's it. So let's take a look at the final edited image. So as you can see here, we kind of tackled everything that we needed to take care of. 
Look at our highlights here. Number one, they're all fixed. It's not too overblown, we st and we have some detail there in the ground. If you look at our beams here, we got some nice color and light hitting those beams so we can really see that design element for this property. And other than that, our center area here is nice and lit. Remember we talked about it being kind of like the sun? And look at where the light's coming from. Look at the, the seating area there. It was so dark before, but now we have some light. And look at the fall off here. I love that. Love this fall off. Love the shadows coming off of these cactuses here on the right side. And also here, we got some direction here coming from the light that we introduced into the scene. And that's it. Other than that, we just toned down the color a little bit so it's not so warm. Um, and, and it wasn't too much. I mean, it was just a couple little pops here and there. And remember guys, make sure that when you guys tackle something like this, have the end result in mind. Don't just shoot, spray and pray and hope for the best. Kind of have an idea in mind as to what you're trying to do when you're out there on site. It'll help save some time and also give you a purpose to your editing workflow when you're back at the computer. So what do we do for this one? What the first thing I saw was those highlights, right? I needed to tone down those highlights. So what do we do? We made sure that whether it was, it was through our ambient brackets or through our flash or through our hot light that we did tame that. And other than that, we targeted our, our beams here, right? And that's pretty much it. We, we do have our seating area here that we, we, we lit so that, that way uh, we can really showcase that it is there rather than if you saw before it was just completely dark it wasn't really any detail there because there's no really light but the really the reason why we can kind of sell that that's lit is if you look there are these overhead lights here so with that you know it could be it could be assumed that maybe that's why this um seating area does have some light there right you know it's a w w sometimes we're like magicians right it's an illusion that we're creating nobody needs to know the actual trick of it but as long as it's kind of believable we, we can really sell this and make it look like it was actually there on site and nothing was ever done after the fact it was all there a single photo and that's it like at the end of the day i don't want someone looking at my shot and think like wow did he uh light the hell out of this thing or was it a natural i mean a compliment would be if this was a natural in-camera shot without anything done to it if someone thinks that then my job is done and it's a compliment to me. So if we just take our time and have a, and, and think of a focus and direction as to where we want our image to go, it'll help us on site to save some time and give us a direction when we're on the computer back editing and delivering this photo to our client. And if you guys are wondering how I'm lighting this thing, it's pretty much like a hot light like this. All you're doing is when you're lighting, you're, you're trying to just get a wide space lit for every section that you're trying to light of that scene. So if you look here, if I'm lighting this background, I'm just kind of making these big wide sweeps and making sure that the property, the space, whatever I'm doing is lit with that light that I'm adding to it. I'm not just putting one hot light and just leaving it like that. I'm spreading it around to get to kind of create a huge softbox with the light rather than it just being one, one strong hard light source. I'm kind of making these wide sweeps so that we get a broader, wider uh, range of that light and hopefully get a, a softer look of it rather than being it really harsh and hard. All right, so let's take a look at this in Photoshop and see how we actually built this up individually. And you can see exactly how I'm lighting this thing to get that final result. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. So let's build this slowly one by one. Here's our base image and pretty much all this image is, is, is just to have a, a starting off point so we can start building this whole thing up. Our next layer here, if you can see, all I'm doing is turning down that interior area where the living room is at. It was a little bit too hot, so I just brought that down a little bit just so that we get some more detail there. Next, remember the, those highlights here, it's just way too hot. So we wanna to try to bring in some detail in those highlight spots. So all we did was just find a ambient frame that was dark enough so we can add some of that information back in. Next, we added, we added another frame in here. It's very subtle, but this one adds just a little bit more information to those highlights. And then I added a hue saturation layer here. The whole point of that is just to make that yellow tone down just a hair. I didn't want it to be so yellow. So if you see before and after, it just kind of tones that yellow down a little bit. Next, now we're starting to target those beams that we talked about. We want to make sure that it's not hidden in the shadow. So adding some light there gives us some information in those beams. 
And here we are, here's another frame that's giving us some more information and light onto the right side of this beam. And as you can see, I'm on the light and blend mode just to help us really only bring in that lighter pixels rather than anything dark. Let's keep going. So here we are, we're lighting up the right side of the scene. And let me see if I can, if I'm in this frame, nope. So I'm actually lighting, if you can see that right side over here, just bringing in some information over there. Let's keep going. All right, so here, let me take this off. As you can see here, I am standing. And remember we talked about the property being kind of like the sun and everything emanates from that center point, right? Well, that's pretty much what I'm doing here. I'm lighting towards the direction of where that camera is. And look what it's doing. It's giving me that beautiful light fall off here and giving me the nice light within this little seating area. So that's pretty much the whole goal of that is just representing if I'm going to light the house, then I'm going to make sure everything's coming from the house direction. So that's off and on. You can see that what, what a difference and, and how it really helps to really showcase that seating area there. Let's keep going. Here's the right side of this little uh, rusted panel there. So we just added some light there. Uh, here's some light onto the, the landscape bushes and trees in this area over there. Now here I'm going to light this uh, area here. I think I have another frame because this is a little bit too hot, but I like the direction of the light and the shadow coming onto this little cactus right there. Let's keep going. Next, here's another frame to watch this. If I take this off, this light, I'm really liking the way that the shadows are coming off of the cactus right here. So I just brought that in. So if I take that off and on, you see how it's kind of really giving us that um, direction from that, that house, right? It, the light's coming from there. Next. So now I brought in another area here where I lit this. So let me see if I have, you can see I'm kind of standing over here and I'm kind of sweeping and lighting this area over here. So I kind of like this way better than just this little area. This was too hot. I kind of darkened that and I like a little bit of what we got going on over here. Uh, and then this one, all I did was just in the background, the mountains, I just kind of darkened that. I, for some reason, I didn't like how bright that was. And then other than that, you can barely see it, but this chair, there's these um, cushions are a couple uh, different colors. One's a, a, a light gray and one's a darker gray, but that light gray was turning blue. So I just kind of toned that down just to here so it's not so blue. And that's it. We saved this, bring it back into Lightroom and just a couple of little tweaks, highlights, shadows. We kept the shadows the same. I actually liked the way the shadows is. I didn't want to open it up. I want it to be nice and dark. I like how the, the shadows are. We open up the whites a little bit, added some blacks, texture, clarity. And then other than that, we just made sure that our image is uh, level. So we just used a grid line and added some vertical lines here to the left and the right. And that's it. We're done. Not too bad. As you can see, remember guys, being there on site when you're at these properties, just think about that end goal, right? Just shoot for that. Don't worry about adding extra lighting, and all this kind of stuff. Just shoot for the areas that you know are the problem areas. Get those frames, whether you're lighting it, whether you're using ambient frames, whatever it is, so you can bring it back to the computer, edit it, and deliver it to your client. All right, guys, let's take a look at our next image. So as you can see here, we have another scene. If you remember, this is our same property that we're, we were working on. And now we are on the ground. Before we were up here standing, shooting with our camera, that top area where this uh, whole scene is. Right now, we're going to be down on the ground, really focusing on the element where this fireplace is at and really creating a nice, beautiful scene here for our client for our um, viewer to appreciate what it could be like there at the property at night, maybe, you know, getting some marshmallows and enjoying some time with your friends and family. So a couple of things here we need to worry about. Look how dark it is now. Obviously, um, it's already past the point of what, um, you know, dusk and twilight is. It's already getting into night. That being said, the beauty about that is that I don't have to um, rush. I could take my time in lighting and I don't have to worry about um, rushing to try to beat the sun or beat the, 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 the night sky from coming. It's already done. But because we know that we're confident in our skills, we can still make this look like it's an earlier twilight 
rather than looking at making it look so dark like this. But let's take a look at a couple areas here that we do definitely need to tackle. Number one, look how hot this fireplace is, right? Here and here. We definitely gotta make sure that whether we're using our flash or our ambient frame, that we tackle that area. Number two, we wanna make sure that this scene, we get some light there, right? Some, if this is where our light, if the fireplace is our, is our you know, sun that we, we consider, we wanna make sure that these chairs do get some illumination onto it coming from there. Let's make sure that we get the property itself lit. Remember those beams we talked about? We wanna make sure that we got those lit. Look how dark it is right now. It's, everything is all falling into shadow. Even the surrounding areas where the, the, the trees are at, we wanna make sure that we target some light over there. And even the foreground area here, there, down here, in front of the house itself, we wanna make sure that we hit that up and make sure that we also get the actual property inside here nice and lit, uh, not lit, but make sure that we're exposed correctly so it's not too blown out. I like how this is looking over here. That's nice and uh, exposed correctly, but down here it's a little bit too hot. So let's take a look at the final image on this one. And look at that, how beautiful is that? Everything is perfectly lit, everything is nicely balanced, and we have a nice detail in the areas that were blown out. Look at our fireplace number one, how beautiful is that fire? Just bringing in an ambient fire there for that foreground and this background area here really gives us that, that detail that we need. And it doesn't look so hot. Our eye isn't necessarily going there because it's bright, it's going there because it's a beautiful scene. And look at our chairs, how beautiful is that? We got some light coming off here onto these chairs, right? Selling that whole scene where that fire is coming from. And even, even around the fire, we got a little bit of light coming off of there. Love that. We tackled the, the darkness in the, in the beams and the other areas of the house itself. So we got some light coming off here, hitting of these beams up top here, so it's not in shadow. We got some light hitting the grounds of this property, right? Emanating from the center of the property out. And we got some more information here in the bushes and trees here on the right side. And other than that, look at, we actually have a sky here. So we were able to add that sky in here, so it doesn't look so dark, right? We have just a little bit of separation between the actual atmosphere and the, um, and the property itself. And that's it, very simple. It wasn't really that complicated, kind of like the previous photo where we went around and having a direction as to how we're lighting. Let's take a look at it into Photoshop and see exactly how we built this whole thing up. All right, so here we are in Photoshop. And as you can see, this is our base layer. This is pretty much just the main purpose of this layer is just to tone down the highlights and the actual house itself. So we have the views looking into the property, nice and uh, exposed, it's not too blown out. Next, we're, as you can see, look at that fireplace, going from this one to this one, it's a beautiful flame, we get some detail here, and even in back there too, we have a nice beautiful looking fireplace in the back. Next. So underneath the fireplace, I just added a little bit of light there just so that we get some detail. It's not so into the shadows. Here we are on the right side. I'm sorry, the left side, and we're adding light. So as you can see, I have my assistant over there. They're just casting light coming towards the ca camera direction. And we're in light and blend mode. Next, same thing over here. We're just adding light to the surrounding areas of this fireplace scene. Here we go, we're adding, adding a couple more detail uh, information into this uh, side area where the, the trees are at. Next, here's some more, a little bit more information there into those bushes. And a little bit more towards the right side over there. Let's keep going. Now we're lighting up a little bit of the center of this house. So we go off and on. Here's some light coming towards that, the tip of this little right side area. And now we're getting some more light here towards the, the center of this where the, the bedroom's at. Hit, hitting that little, the, the wall where that rusted uh, metal is. And now we're onto the left side here, make sure we get some detail there. And next we're just turning it down, so this is an ambient frame, so we're just kind of toning down the, those highlights. It was a little bit too sloppy, as you can see, so just toning it down a hair just kind of balances it all out. 
this is the curves here, just adding some information here, some just brightening up that exposure there on that little beam. Here's another one, same thing with the curves. We're just bringing that in to get some more information there. It was kind of difficult from being at this ground level to actually light up there without getting some um, unwanted shadows. So we just kind of brought that in there. And then this is just for the sky. We're just kind of bringing in some more information. And then all we did is, if you notice, all we did was make a selection on the outside of this, this entire uh, uh, building. So we got the mountains. Uh, you can't see it here, but pretty much, I, I think I deleted the layer. But what I had originally was an ambient layer that was overexposed where I can see the border of the, the mountain, the top of this building. So I can really get a nice selection made. And then what I did is I just pretty much painted a sky. So all this is, if I make a selection here, is a selection around that sky. And I just painted it blue. And then all I did was change the blend mode to lighten because there's actually stars there. So by adding a lighten uh, blend mode to it, we actually can reveal some of the stars since those are the brighter pixels showing through. And that's it. We save this, bring it back into Lightroom and a couple of little tweaks here. Number one, the biggest one is we cropped it, right? So going from that four by six ratio into a 16 by nine, love this ratio. It's a little bit more intimate and really brings you into that scene. We drop the highlights just to here, blacks just to here, texture clarity. And then other than that, just like before, we just made sure that we had our, uh, our uh, where is it here? Our grid lines. So we have our vertical line here on the left and the right to make sure we our vertical is nice and straight. And that's it. Now, other than that, it's a completed image. Mostly everything was done in Photoshop with the subtle little touches in Lightroom to just give it a little polished look and we're done. Send this off to our client and another happy job for us and for our client. Quick, simple, turned around without spending too much time on this, just like the previous one. If you guys notice, do you guys, are you guys familiar with complementary colors? Look at the sky, look at the chairs, look at the, the, um, the, the, the color of the actual building itself. We, we have orange and blues. Those two colors balance really, really good. So when you have a scene like this, I, you know, I know it's going back into school and the, all this kind of stuff, but if you guys can just have a general overview of what complementary complementary colors are you can really understand like you know what i'm going to go ahead and, and, and add a fake sky in there that's blue why because it'll complement that house and really really give give the, a, a nice feel to this house rather than it just being too dark right we got the the nice blues in here in these chairs and it really balances beautifully with the colors of the home itself that nice blue and orange like i said those complementary colors really work well for this scene at the end of the day, you know, all our training, all our, you know, watching on YouTube, going to workshops, learning and picking people's brains and whatnot, you know, eventually you're gonna come across complementary colors. That's just gonna be one of those tools that you're gonna have in the back of your head and you can bring it out into a situation like this. You're gonna look at a scene like this and be like, you know what? This is an orange property. There's some blue chairs there. We got some orange fireplace. I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a, a blue sky to this because I think it's actually gonna complement the scene. It's actually going to work with the property rather than distract from it. So just another thing to think about when you guys are out there shooting and editing and, and delivering and, and, you know, just trying to bring out all that, that arsenal of tools that you guys have mentally in your head. So that way, when you guys are delivering that product to your client, it's a completed polished image rather than half done, right? Like you want to make sure that we've target, targeted every element in this scene so we could deliver a really good, nice, clean, polished image to our client. So guys, we have one more image to show you, but I'm not gonna go in depth like we did on these past two images. It's just a before and after so you can see what it is from what we did from that ambient shot and after we lit it to get that final image. But I am gonna put up a link so you guys can see the actual uh, speed edit of how this whole thing was done. So you guys can appreciate and take your time and watch that if you guys wanna see a little bit more in depth as to how much time was spent as to actually putting that whole image together. So let's take a look at this next image here.
So real quick, as you can see, here's our next image. And the way we got this composition, as you can see, this property is sitting low amongst the landscape. So what I had to do was number one, use my 24 foot pole way up high so I can get the actual composition for this shot. It was, there was no way to get this composition without a drone or a pole up in the air to get this composition. This was the money shot and being low to the ground, there's no way you're gonna really capitalize on the different features of this home. That being said, look at really quick, what we need to deal with and what we need to work with is number one, look how dark this whole foreground element is. We gotta make sure that we tackle that. And what are we gonna do? Remember we talked about the house being the sun? So here's our sun. We gotta make sure that all this surrounding area is nice and lit. That means the landscape, the bushes, the trees, the rocks, everything is gonna have light coming from the direction of that house. That's pretty much it. Other than that, just like what we did before, we are lighting the house, but the main thing in this particular scene is I wanna make sure that those bushes have light and shadow emanating from the direction of that house. That's, that's the end goal of this particular shot. So let's take a look at the final photo on this one. So here we are guys, this is our final image here. And pretty much as you can see, just like we did on the past two photos, we lit our property beautifully. So we have light hitting the elements of this scene. So we have detail in those sections. We have our living room here, nice and exposed. We have our bedroom here, nicely exposed. Even this design element here, nicely exposed. And all our light is coming from the home. So remember before in the ambient shot, how dark that foreground element is. But now we have nice and light and shadow coming from the direction of the home. Very simple. I mean, that's the whole goal. We're bringing our eye into the most important thing, which is the house itself, making me want to see myself sit into this little scene here, or I can see the kitchen there, the living room, the bedroom there. I mean, I can see the different elements and I can see that the whole point of this is just drawing me in rather than taking me out. And that's it guys. I really hope, you know, you guys can really appreciate these little techniques that we use to build these images up. And remember guys, don't be left out. Join that wait list at pmreconference.com. Make sure you guys sign up so you guys can get that early bird discount and also your spot at this year's conference. So thank you all again for joining me on this video. And remember, this isn't the rule. This is just my approach as to how I do what I do when I'm shooting, editing, and delivering the photo to my client. I hope you guys find some tips and techniques that's gonna help you out. But remember, keep on shooting guys and I'll see you next time.